So this is my father. Uh, he came to this country 35 years ago from Panama, looking for an opportunity to support his family both here and back home. And he found it at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, working as a laundry aide. Now, in the late 90s, the hospital actually outsourced this laundry department and uh, laid off about 80% of its staff. So my dad was now left doing the work of a team of people, and it started to take a, an impact on his health. He started to complain of back problems, his knees were hurting, his wrists. But he never wanted to miss work because he didn't want to be seen as undependable or physically unable to do the work. Now, my dad recently retired um, last year, but he also had major knee surgery. I believe the health consequences of his work will always be with him. What I didn't know that my dad was actually one of the lucky ones. So in our country, every day, 150 workers die due to hazardous working conditions. In our state, we uh, know that Massachusetts families bury a loved one almost every week due to workplace fatalities. Low wage workers in particular face the most unsafe conditions. This is Paul King, a Massachusetts maintenance worker. Now, Paul's employer didn't provide him with the right type of training or protective equipment to do his job safely. As a result, in 2005, Paul went to work where he was electrocuted and died. Now, in the words of his wife, Deb, she says, no one should have to experience the heartache of a loved one killed on the job. On top of the emotional devastation that workplace injuries, illnesses, and fatalities bring, there's also a financial um, impact. Across our country, every year, we spend over $300 billion in lost wages, in medical costs, and in direct productivity. Um, teen and immigrant workers, in particular, are twice as likely to be injured on the job due to lack of training, uh, protective equipment, or just fear of speaking up. So for over 40 years, MassCosh has, gained, uh, has engaged um, workers, teens, immigrants, and families like Paul's to advocate for systemic change and bring about uh, better working conditions for all workers. Now, when workers come to MassCosh, they feel like victims trapped in unsafe working conditions. But through our programs, the Teens Lead at Work program, the Healthy Schools Initiative, and our Immigrant Worker Center, these workers are transformed into leaders, better understanding their workplace rights, being able to access legal and medical resources, and then working with policymakers to ensure that we're passing regulations and laws that will ultimately protect workers from injury and death. Now, this year alone, over 600 workers will be engaged through our work and will impact thousands because we're doing tons of trainings, coalition building, and we're effectively changing both workplace and public policy. So here's an example of how we engage workers and grieving families to become agents of change. So in 2004, Christian Jambroni, a Brazilian immigrant youth worker, was stabbed after chasing a shoplifter while working at a CVS. Peer leaders from our Teens Lead at Work program decided to um, interview other young retail clerks and found that many of them had also faced shoplifters, but almost none of them were aware of trainings or policies that would prevent them from being injured or killed on the job. So our teens wrote a report where they documented their findings, their recommendations, and they released it at a memorial event with Christian's mom a year later. As a result of their advocacy, in 2007, Massachusetts passed its first child labor law reforms in over 50 years. Today, no young person has to work alone after 8 p.m., and the Attorney General can hold employers accountable for the safety and well-being of their young workers. Now, since 1980, MassCosh has been engaged in many legislative campaigns, and in particular, over the last few years, we've been able to pass four key state laws while engaging immigrants, teens, families, community allies, and organized labor. So this particular um, bill under the 2013, the Temporary Worker Right to Know Bill, actually was started when temp workers were coming to our Immigrant Worker Center and sharing their stories and experiences, and it actually launched the campaign, which took six years, but ultimately, in 2013, this bill was passed, and so today, temp workers have access to critical information in their native language about their workplace rights. So across Massachusetts, there are thousands of workers ready to make impact, not only for themselves, but in all of Massachusetts workplaces, factories, and offices. Over the next few years, we hope to achieve even more public policy 
um, changes, launch new programs, and uh, increase our impact. So with your investment, we'll make sure that health and safety is every, is every worker's right, and we'll be able to empower even more workers to advocate for both workplace and public policy changes. So help us change the system so we no longer lose loved ones like Christian or Paul. Help us change the system so that all of us, teens, immigrants, and folks like my dad, can earn a sustainable wage in workplaces free of hazard and abuse. When we engage the state's most vulnerable workers to become leaders in the political process and create real impact, that's when you see the true power of collective action and civic engagement. Thank you so much for your time.